Hello there, welcome to this next video in the series, All Things Made New. I am Amanda Nicole, and I'm a little sad at the moment. <laughs> I just, I'm sad and I'm laughing. I just recorded a video for you offering tulip poplar medicine. It was just packed with medicine from that tree, which is so dear to me and offers its medicine generously and deeply and it got deleted by accident. So, <laughs> but I thought how interesting that the next plant that I wanted to offer was Hawthorne. It's very fitting, just wait till you hear the medicine and um, we'll begin with Hawthorne and I'll try that to a popular video again. If you're wondering who who I am and why I would be offering plant medicine in this way and how I would know what the church needs or what to offer. You can watch the first video in this series. The link is below and you're also welcome to visit my website www.alchemillas.com. That link is also below to learn a little bit more about me. So Hawthorne, which has been blooming here, it's springtime. Hawthorne is a medicine of the heart. It is most certainly traditionally used as a heart tonic. And particularly when it comes to our emotions and our spiritual state, it is a plant that helps the heart process grief. So I love the way that this plant is presented by um, an herbalist, Sean Donahue. He says that Hawthorne is an herb for lost worlds. And I love that because there really are different experiences of grief. There really are different ways of experiencing loss. There are some things that we lose and it is a loss and it makes us sad and we grieve it, but we wouldn't say it was a world that had been lost. But there are other experiences that we have and a whole world has been lost. So maybe it was a grandparent that we loved dearly and they passed away, they passed on passed over and a whole world is lost to us. Everything is different now. The world is different now. Or maybe we lose a job or we lose a home, a place, and everything is different. There was life before and there's life after. A world's been lost. We've lost a world. I think for many of us, <clears throat> that have spent our lives in the church or maybe a significant portion of them and have loved it and loved the people in it and maybe particular doctrines and practices and beliefs. When something happens where we lose that, we lose the church or we lose people in it that were connected to us, or we lose our faith in some measure, or a belief or a practice that no longer is with us for various reasons, whether we changed our minds, or whether it was taken, or all the different ways that we can find ourselves parting ways, you know, with the church in different aspects. It's like a world is lost to us, a whole world. And we find ourselves in a different place, a different time, perhaps even a different us. And it's, it's devastating. And using that word, I would direct you to the video on Blueberry for the effects of devastation. And so we can grieve. We can grieve deeply. And others really may not understand. Those who have not been a part of the church in that way, or those who are still in it and, or of it, or however the description is, but just haven't felt the same pain and separation that aren't grieving in the same way. They may not understand. And for us, internally, our world has fallen apart. Our world has fallen apart. And we may not even be able to know what world we're in anymore. What world are we in? What is real? What is true? How do I operate now in the universe and in this place without those beliefs or those 
people or that structure, right? It, it goes deep into our hearts, a place deep inside of us, and we begin to grieve. So Hawthorne is for that, is for that sort of grief, the grieving of lost worlds. What I also like in how um, he presents the medicine is, of course, Hawthorne has thorns, you know, and in the old world, you know, it's making these, these hedges that it's hard to, to go through, right? And he speaks of how the fairies and the gnomes and the elementals are rushing in the face of um, metal and industry and progress to hide in these hawthorn groves, in these hawthorn um, circles until it's safe to come out again. So I wonder how many of us have experienced that where our spirits, our essences, our beliefs, our practices, especially as they relate to the natural world and, and our place in it and our relationship to it, have found ourselves needing to go for some protection into a hawthorn grove. I think of it as Sleeping Beauty, where, you know, all of the briars are around the castle and then the prince has to, like, cut through them, you know, to get to her. Many of us have had parts of us tucked away until it's safe to come out again. So Hawthorne helps you protect yourself until it is safe to come out again. Um, but it also helps you come out. That's another way that it's presented. So we have these lost worlds. So what do we do? Do we sit around in despair and in devastation and in grief? How do, how do we go forward? So Hawthorne helps us create a new world. A new world. A new beginning. A new world. It gives us hope. And it gives us a touch of <clears throat> magic and divine spirit assistance in going forward to create that. It's interesting, too, because often in creating a new world, we're doing what? We're setting free um, the pieces of an even older world, sort of a returning, a resurrection, right? Is what's happening often when we are creating a new world. I know for myself and my own journey, which I'm still on, still walking this path, it's been difficult to know when to come out. When is it safe to come out? When is it safe to speak and talk? I have definitely run into hiding in a Hawthorne Grove. And I have most certainly grieved lost worlds. And I really very much desire to create a new one. And one that is full of Hawthorne medicine, that is Heart medicine. Heart medicine. Hawthorne is also a tree connected with death and dying. We could see that, right? <laughs> with the connection to grief. So the tree, the flowers, can smell so sensual, like, like sex, like intimacy. And then as they change, they can smell like, like death, like something decomposing. And so we can see that in our experiences with the church. Um, parts of us dying, or maybe not even parts of us, but also as we observe the church, the church dying. And we can grieve that. We can grieve those places. We can grieve that process. But I love how Hawthorne is connected to May to spring, to Beltane, to fertility, to life, to sensuality, to sex, to fertility. You know, there is that hope of reproduction, of recreation, of something being made new, of birth. I also love its connection with sensuality and with what is sensuous. So the church does not. The church does not like that. Even when they speak about how honorable the marriage bed is, but no one here is really doing anything in the marriage bed, right? 
You don't even want to think of that. Everything is so tainted. It's like, it's interesting, the smell of the hawthorn flowers, where you have the smell of the sensual and the sexual, and the smell of, of death, of decomposing. Like, I feel like that's what the church does. Like, it makes this really beautiful, sweet, sweet, musky, sensual smell that is good and intoxicating. It, it covers it over and says, you know, it's death. It's decomposing. Um, no, that's not the case. Let's let that view of sensuality, of sexuality, of the body, of intimacy die. <laughs> and let's dream a new world where what is sensuous and sexual is celebrated because it's full of life and it's full of love and it's full of heart. Hawthorne is also connected to the fairies and the fairy realm, which is not acceptable inside the bounds of the church. Some will simply call it fairy tales. Some will call it witchcraft. Mm. Hawthorne can find, help you find healing there, help you find connection there, and help you dream up a new world, a world that is full of imagination, which I, in my experience, have found the church greatly lacking in, greatly lacking in imagination and really having no room for it. The part of the church that I was in is much more interested in the mind and thinking and syllogism and logic, and it doesn't have room for things of spirit or for things of the imagination or of the heart. But this is Hawthorne. Hawthorne is also a plant that is able to take our hearts into deep, dark places. There are places down there that are, you know, almost like dungeons with their darkness, with the pain that's there. And some of us have very deep heart wounds from the church that need healing. And I think that some plants might struggle a bit to get to those places. The hawthorn is brave and hawthorn knows the dark. And hawthorn is able to go into those places and with its thorns, which will become needles, <laughs> mend, mend that place, mend it. It is a tree of resurrection, new life, rebirth, um, a new world. And that's exactly what we need. And that's exactly what we're hoping for and dreaming of. So a little bit of Hawthorne medicine for those of you that might need it, that might be grieving what you've lost and concerned and worried and anxious about, is there even anything ahead? I know in my experience, when the church has been your whole world, you can think, is there even a world once it's gone? And I assure you that there is. And not only is there a world once it leaves you or once it disappoints you or once you find yourself saying, I'm not sure I can say in this particular place in this particular way. Not only is there a world, but there's the divine, there's God, there's all of those things there. I promise. <laughs> and so I would recommend Hawthorne Medicine for some deep healing of the heart. And for offering hope of things that are to come, of new beginnings.